and welcome to Snetterton for what we expect to be our last race of the season. Of course, we're in the KA once again after we saw the issues with the Honda. Not not significant, but enough for me to just think, just save my money and don't use it for the rest of the year. Focus on upgrades for, for next season. So we're here in the KA once again. It's the CMMCS and we're at Snetterton this time. It's the 300 circuit, I think which is probably the worst circuit in the UK for the 4K. It's just, yeah, it's, it's not, for me at least, it's not the greatest. Just loads and loads of straights and yeah, it's tough. In the Saxo last week, I gotta say this track was actually quite fun, but in the KA with its lack of power, when I came here before with the CSEC, I did just struggle to really gel with it. Just, I guess it's just one of those situations where the car is very ill suited to the track, but maybe it'll be a different story here today. There's about half the amount of cars out on track, so instead of, I think, sort of 35, nearly 40 cars, we're looking at under 20. I think it was 16 or 17, around that number on the entry list, so better for me in terms of not being so much traffic, but if anything, the cars at the front are even faster. We've got Rod Burley's Escort, uh, Andrew McKenzie's BMW, and then also got Nick Sutton's pretty amazing Mitsubishi uh, Evo, Eight, nine. I'm gonna. Get, I've got that wrong, at least half. So maybe, it was, maybe even further on than that. I'm not too sure. I'm not too good with my Mitsubishi's. But regardless, they're in the top class. They're going to be pretty quick, obviously. And then you've got the likes of someone like Martin Scott and his BMW, I think it's pretty rapid. And then you've got Ken Angel and Chris Bassett and Tin Tops that I can think of top of my head that will likely be pretty rapid. So. It's going to be an interesting one. There's some really good drivers out there. I mean, I'm not going to be racing with anyone, unfortunately, at least from the entry list. I saw the person I might be closest to will be Anslo, who you may remember from the uh, Silverstone vlog a couple of months back now. So he might be my closest person I'm to, but he's in the Saxa that I was in last week here, and that's still going to be lapping uh, a lot quicker than I will be able to. So it is what it is. I'm going to be driving around myself, but you know, ideally I was going to be doing this in the Honda. I had some nice plans to do the majority of the season in this uh, C series with that car, but uh, just the way it went. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, but I really am enjoying, enjoying driving the KA. I've got to say that it's a weird one. At the start of the year, I had no idea that I was going to be driving this car, but thanks to Tim at KMC and everyone else there, you know, like Rich as well, it, you know, they gave me the opportunity to, to maybe race it at Cadwell. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that, but then just, you know, talk spiraled and I've been lucky to borrow it for a, a number of races this year so very thankful to him because without that I probably wouldn't have been racing so much because of all the, the things we've had go with the Honda but it's cool I'm looking forward to getting back out there the smaller grid should definitely help me and overall just looking to have a good time so uh, yeah I guess let's prepare and get out there Welcome to day two here at Snetterton. So it was good to get here a day early, set up our, our tents and everything, get the KA off, put the transponder in, put the timer in. Um, well, I say I did, Dad did that stuff. Um, he likes to keep himself busy, so that's what he did. And we just went and got a little bit of food and stuff like that for the weekend whilst uh, that all happened. So I guess because it's a Friday, it took us a little bit of time to get here, about four hours, longer than expected, but it's still good we still got everything done in time but it was nice to get out there and do a bit of a cycle last night i managed to pick up in a couple of little areas that i feel like are going to be important going to the first session of the day which is our qualifying session actually so we're going to be the first people out there so no no breaking in of the track if you, if you will there's going to be nobody to warm up it for us but yeah notice there's a bit of sort of grass and debris at certain parts of the track so i'll take that into account when when doing my qualifying laps just don't go a hundred percent on the first few laps which i guess i wouldn't be doing anyway but it's definitely an important thing uh, this ka has got the nankang ns2rs i think that's the the correct abbreviation but they take quite a bit of time to warm up so i mean normally it would be like say two or three laps but around here we're looking at probably more like a lap and a half because it's such a long lap around here at snetterton you know we're looking at I don't know, two and a half minutes plus, even for sort of like a, a semi-quick car. So, 
Yeah, that's going to be interesting. We'll see how that goes in qualifying. I don't know how many laps I'm actually going to get in. The mist certainly you know, came in through the night. I mean, I had a pretty rough night once again, as, as always it seems to be the case. I had a rough night camping, at least the first night. Um, there was lots of moisture on the tents and inside the car at the start of the day. So we'll get all that sort of stuff sorted. You know, the transponders in, timers in, all that's good. So, yeah, we've just got to go for the scrutineering early on. I, I hope that's going to be all good, to be perfectly honest. I can't see why not. The car's gone through scrutineering before without any sort of issue. So touch wood, that is, uh, that's the case once again. But yeah, not much to do now. We've just got to build up to qualifying, do a lot, you know, that, that scrutineering, just get prepared and go out. It's an early start, but that's all part of it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the day. Some nice sort of gaps between sessions, which allow some downtime at least. We had our scrutineering first thing and that was all good, no problems with the car. So here we are getting ready for qualifying here at Snetterton. As mentioned, we have driven this car around this track before so it's one of the first times we've ever gone back to the same track in the same car which is really good for us. Of course we did the angle C back to back which is kind of two events rolled into one. But I'd say this is quite a good one for me to, to come back to see how far I can get and hopefully I can go faster than last time. That will be the aim. Conditions were pretty similar. It wasn't super cold, but there was sun. There wasn't really any grey skies, any chance of rain, so that was good for us. And overall the car was feeling really good early on. As I mentioned, I didn't push all the way to the limit early on. And I feel like I was building up speed as we went through the session, which was all perfect, exactly how I wanted the session to go. So here's my fastest lap from qualifying, which I think actually ends up being the last lap of the session, which I guess is kind of how you want it to be. So I was pulling to the pit wall along the straight, then to the left-hand side down into turn one. Now I think just a, a small dab of the brake now and going to the first corner. I think you probably can do it near enough flat, but I'm not the person to have loads of confidence going to a lot of these corners, so I still think building up to that is a big dim. Into the hairpin here, I think I was generally doing not too badly through here. Actually, a corner, I think, generally I was quite close to the limit. Up to the left-hander here, one that I have struggled with quite a bit, but confidence through this weekend kept going up through here, and I think I got quicker and quicker through here, but it's a Ford KA with a small engine, so I wasn't expecting to be particularly quick through there anyway. And actually we were getting out the way of a Sierra Cosworth there, so a big diverse grid of cars here, which is really awesome to see with the club. I think I mentioned a few times already that we've been doing the video stuff for the CMMCS this year, so we've been at every single event, whether that be racing myself or just there filming, it's been absolutely fantastic, I've really loved my time with the club through 2021 and hopefully we'll continue it on to 2022, but of course I'll discuss in a video in early 2022 about what my plans are for that season, because there will be changes and different goals and aspirations which I'll all mention there. Back to this lap at Snetterton, I mean it's tidy but it's not especially fast through this long right hander which leads on to the long back straight. When I did my track cycle on the night previous to this I did notice the moisture build up, the dew that was building up at the start of the evening and overnight I was expecting the track to be slippy because the grass actually looked a little wet, not through rain but through the dew that had built up. But to be fair, the track, considering the time of year and the time of day we were doing this qualifying session, felt surprisingly grippy, quite good actually. So as the left-hander, keeping it left so we can swing it into the right here. As mentioned, I wasn't really trying to find the limits here in the qualifying session, just set some laps to build my confidence really, because with a 15-minute qualifying session around the Snetterton 300 circuit in a Ford K, you're not going to get many laps. <laughs> I think I might have got like six laps in. Not great, but that's the way it goes with club racing. You don't get the privilege of doing practice, then qualifying. There may be another qualifying, and then like three or four races. It's a short qualifying followed by two short races most of the time. So overall, not too bad. A smooth lap, not any real mistakes in there, I'd say. Some time to find for sure as momentum through the corners is a huge thing and up to 
crossed the line there. I'm not sure whether that was the last lap, but it was definitely this last or penultimate lap of the session that we set that time. So there we are with qualifying for the CMMCS at Snetterton. So you know that I've done this track before in this car and that gave me, I'm saying a bit more confidence than normal. It allowed me to know in the back of my mind, I've done all these corners before in this car. Yes, it was two months ago, but or even more than two months ago, but regardless, it allows me to be a little bit more relaxed going into this one and feel a little bit more at home with the track straight away. So yeah qualifying went pretty well i've got to say i mean much much better than i would have actually expected personally because before as embarrassingly slow as it was my best lap time was sort of i think over three minutes which is very slow around here and yeah we immediately went quicker than that i was going to get in the car get out of some of the get out of the sun i don't know whether it will make us any better in the race car but yeah my first lap out there my first flight lap was already as quick as I went last year, last year, last month or a couple of months ago, which I was pretty happy with. That was a nice sort of starting point. Immediately, I felt, you know, I was at, at the best pace I did last time on that one, which was really cool. I don't know why the track was really slippy in the first few laps, and I can't lie, I didn't have much confidence early on. So I was pretty happy with myself that I was able to put in that lap time straight away. Don't get me wrong, it's not a good lap time, but I was happy that straight away we were. We were quicker than last time which was good and then just building up through the session and i don't know the lap times kept coming down i don't think i got the perfect lap in i mean i think there's that's always the case you never really get a perfect lap in motorsport uh but anyways i got down to i think like a 252 which once again i know is not great can't lie i was a bit worried going into this weekend whether i'd have any pace or just have any fun out there but once pick, you know, once I picked up the pace and you attack the corners a bit more, this track is a lot more fun than I found it previously. And I think I even said it in this video, wasn't particularly looking forward to this one in terms of the track layout because I thought it was going to be quite boring. Yeah, there's still two quite long straights in there, which, yeah, aren't the best for this car. But I've got to say, just it was much more fun once I started to get a bit close to the limit. You know, I felt the tyres were starting to squeal a bit more. I was actually hitting a few more apexes, I think it, just, it all felt just a lot better. And I still know though, there is a lot of time to be found. For me, I feel like if I can, if I can get sort of a 250, I'll be really happy with myself. You know, with a bit more grip on the track, you know, cars going around, maybe a bit slightly warmer conditions, I might be able to do that in the race, but I don't know. I'm gonna be driving around with myself, that's for sure in the race, but definitely a bit more confidence than I had at the CSEC event here uh, two months back. But yeah, pretty happy with how that went. With, I think there's sort of like 16, 18 cars on the track. It's much easier to take it all in. I think there was sort of 35, 40 cars at the CSCC uh, two months back, which obviously meant there was a lot more coming past and a lot more looking in the mirrors. Whereas today it's not so much the case, which is good for me. I mean, obviously it's, you know, having a link to the club, you want it to be successful and get more people in. Um, but I guess selfishly in my head, in a, such a slow car, you want to be looking in your mirrors less and actually enjoying the racing and that's that's kind of been the case today if i've enjoyed it a lot so looking forward to the race we've got a little bit of time now not that long i mean i think it's only two hours between the end of our quali and the start of our race but there's like five caterham sessions a formula forward session and a modified forward session in between us so there's a lot of stuff and we're the last thing before the the lunch break which is kind of nice i'd rather that than be the first thing after lunch i think well you know without any issues to the car seemingly so happy with that looking forward to the race now i've rambled on way too long here but i think it's just because i'm a little bit more excited for this one now i was wasn't looking forward to it too much actually i know you shouldn't say that because obviously racing is like a dream but i was like oh no this is going to be a repeat of last time but no i feel much better straight away which is good right bit of rake bit of food maybe and uh let's go racing soon just for 1 p.m you may have also noticed the different race suit that I'm wearing here. Now, I'll call this the chubby spec race suit. That's unfortunately I've put on weight this year, so I still just about fit into the black suit, but it wasn't comfortable, if you get what I mean. So we decided, well, I decided to use this suit, which is actually an old GP2 suit, which still has all of the FIA approval. It looks quite fancy and quite cool, and it is, but, Let's be honest, you're racing a Ford KA here, Alex. In a GP2 overall, you look a bit silly. I knew that, 
I fully was aware, but I didn't really have any other choice. So that's what we had to rock for this race here at Snetterton. Overall, was feeling quite confident for the race, just go out there and have fun. Obviously, I was at the back of the grid, but weren't a million miles off. Angelo in his Saxo just in front, who's in his still in his first few events of car racing. Give John a little wave there. I saw him behind the camera. But Angelo in the black and orange sack, so you can see just to the right hand side of the screen there. He was still a good chunk faster than us, but if there was any rain, any change in the conditions, I thought possibly having a little bit more experience than him, I might be able to keep up, but it wasn't the case at the end of the day. We had a lovely sunny day in, this was October, so to be fair, we had really good conditions considering the time of year, but I think that if we did have rain or started to get slippy, I feel like I might have been able to keep up with Jan Angelo, which was nice. It was that nice to know that I wasn't that far off now. I was definitely improving, a much bigger improvement than I expected over last time out at Snetterton. So it's a rolling start with the CMMCS, so we go around the last couple of corners here. It's two by two as we go around to the last corner here and Angelo's obviously to our right hand side at the back row of the grid here but you can see everyone accelerates out the final corner then slows up but I can basically just stay flat out here so I did leave a bit of a gap to I think that's Ian in front in his Fiesta and then I could sort of just keep going here so they all got a better start on the left hand side so briefly for maybe a hundred meters I'm ahead of Angelo but then his horsepower kicks in and gets him past me so up to the first corner here now of course I was aware just like in the CSCC event here that this was a hot point for action somewhere where there could be incidents but no through the first turn no problems at all kept the gap to Angelo through there which was quite good now into the braking zone here for turn two and you can see here in the footage that John captured there was an incident the E30 spinning around in the mid pack and that would unfortunately have to drop all the way to the rear as even I would manage to get past him and well for a few corners at least not be in last position so there we are good stuff from me a nice overtaking and generally the pace just got better and better throughout I was actually quite happy with myself as this race went on now you know through this whole season I've been not especially happy with how I've driven out there not been particularly quick in all areas now I'll still say that I'm not quick but at the same time I definitely think there was a nice improvement over last time out here at Snetterton I know that was right after the incident in the Honda but still some much more confidence coming in which was really really important for me so I kept my fingers crossed that that would be the case going through into race number two as well. Hopefully that confidence will stay with me. So into the left hander at the end of the straight here and I think you'll see just in front of us, I think this was maybe one or two laps into this race, you can see the red Fiesta just in front is starting to slow down. That's Nick in his Ford Fiesta ST, I think it's a 150 and unfortunately having some issues early on in this race he probably didn't expect me to be coming around so far behind the rest of the field but you know I'm in a K at the end of the day so round here and that would put us not in last position as Nick wouldn't actually end up finishing the race but that's not really why we go racing I don't know why I go racing I don't really care about not finishing last I just want to have a good time and even though I was just driving around by myself I was actually having a good time as I mentioned a few times before through these videos in the KA so we're a little further into the race now but I wanted to show you this clip as a nice perspective of the difference between the fastest car on track or equal fastest car on the track and the slowest car on the track here with the CMMCS. So Rob Burley obviously infamous now in the UK motorsport scene. So many wins, so many great drives and some really cool cars that he's driven as well. And he's at the forefront of the CMMCS powering it forward and you see how quick that car is around here at Snetterton. It's a track that I'm sure is quite a lot of fun in that car because of course it has some long straights which of course the Escort is pretty good at. But also at the same time, there's cars that can share that battle with Rod. You can see Gavin Dunn's BMW there. There's also Nick Sutton's magnificent 
Mitsubishi that we've seen a few times this season. So he does have some worthy competitors rod in the CMM CS. So I'm looking forward to 2022. Hopefully we'll see some more great cars out there battling with rod at the front of the field. Likes of Alex Sidwell in his V8 Commodores. I'm hoping that he'll come back after his incident at Silverstone. That of course wasn't his fault. Um, Paul Watson himself, some great drives this year. I remember back to Cadwell where he's challenging Rod, obviously with a slightly less powerful car, so that was really good to see. But overall, a fantastic array of cars within this series, and I'm looking forward to coming back in 2022 and seeing what else is out there. Of course, we won't be in the KA for that, but it's been a really great experience this year to, to drive this, and a massive thank you to Tim. A turn 38 motorsport the Kettering Motorist Centre for his time and allowing us to use this car. It's awesome. He's actually ended up selling it now, which is really good for him. I hope he made a profit out of it. It's a really well prepared car and yeah, it was a huge pleasure to drive it. So up to the start finish line, we're going to show you this, the last lap of the race, which ended up being, I think, my fastest lap of race one as well and my personal best lap time in the KA so far around Snetterton. So already slightly compromised, you could say, into turn one, having to let a few cars through. A short jab on the brake through there, as mentioned. Don't quite have the confidence to go flat through there. I think you probably just about could, but it's maybe having the, the slightly better tires underneath you and the confidence, the, the mix of those two would definitely help. Now into the hairpin, swing it in. I think a pretty good line through there not washing out too wide but also at the same time carrying enough speed through the corners to use the whole of the track you can see i'm just getting myself ready for the long left hand here which is maybe slightly twitchy in a car like this so i can't imagine what it's like in a faster car i think it's because it is essentially a 90 degree corner maybe even a little bit more so they're taking quite a lot of speed through there and you're taking quite a lot of angle through there so it feels like you're slightly on the limit into the agostini hairpin you can see this one's a lot wider than the, the previous one turn two so you can take more speed through there and i think nicely done not too bad at all no lockups like we experienced at angle c when trying to push through this fast left hander here possibly could have used a bit more road on the right hand side in the exit so i think i was pretty happy with that but obviously a little bit more time could be found there this sequence of corners for whatever reason i just can't get my head around i can never seem to put this all together the first right but then the second right also is tough onto the long back straight but i think the first right is the one that i struggle with the most breaking late enough because essentially the corner exit is wider than i think it is so you can carry more speed through than i really think you can so now the back straight here, and I think for whatever reason I was getting some sort of pain in my hands. I have no idea why, whether it was just cramping up or whatever. But I was starting to get a little bit of pain at the end of qualifying. Also in the first race here as well. Taking more curb there. This looks certainly more committed than in qualifying. And I think it was about four seconds quicker, five seconds quicker than qualifying. So I found a considerable amount of time. Hopefully it looks quicker. <laughs> I can't say for sure that it does, but I feel like it does. You can see through the faster corners that are a little bit more twitch and starting to find the limit of adhesion with these Nankang tires, which ultimately probably aren't quite as good as the Toyos because they're more of a racing tire, the Toyos, but these Nankangs, they have lasted me I think the equivalent of six events, so pretty great tyre for that. Long lasting, probably not the ultimate speed for a track day tyre though, I'd say they're pretty much exactly what you want and they're pretty cheap as well. There's the checker flag, I was happy with this race and looking forward to race number two. There we are, the first race is gone, it's actually been quite a few hours now since that had happened and just really happy, it was nice to see pretty much every lap that I had clean the time was coming down feeling more confident in the car and it's just exactly how I'd want a race to go if I was racing by myself which of course I was but yeah I felt really happy with just how the race went we took another chunk of time off uh, our qualifying time so I think my qualifying time was a 52 53 I think it was a 52 and me down I think got to the 47s or even 46s I was really really happy to see the improvement I mean I still know there's time out there but you know to see that much of a leap between sessions I, I didn't expect if I could match that time in the last race would be good uh, the, the tyres definitely take a little bit of 
time to get up to temperature which is you know obviously a bit of a shame when it's such a short race but you know maybe i should have invested in better tires if that was the case but it's, it's all good i mean essentially i've been racing myself for a lot of these uh, times i've been in the ka so haven't really had much of a chance to battle with something uh, funnily enough probably the first race I did at cadwell was probably the closest i was to someone and that was in qualifying against some some classic cars that weren't actually going to end up racing with us so it has been a bit of a, a lonesome adventure with the ka obviously the plan was to race in the enduro car series which i think unfortunately looks like that's that's not going to happen um but these things happen it's it's life unfortunately not everything we expect especially in the world of motorsport happens uh, as as expected so uh, regardless pretty happy with how that race went some really cool stuff out there uh, today i mean i actually didn't think caterings would be especially interesting um but we watched a couple of the races out there and to be fair there was some there was some good racing but what's out there now is probably what most people are here for as, as fans is the modified fords just some really really fantastic cars out there uh, paul neville who sort of organizes the series is an absolutely fantastic job uh, getting off the ground over the last couple of years and just got super super grids now which is really great to see i think pretty much every event we've been to said like 25 cars and you know some of them i think brands hatch last time had like 50 55 cars which is awesome regardless the k8 by me there we've got one more race to go could be my last race of the season which we were kind of thinking is the case right now but you know we're going off into the sunset you can see up there probably all blown out of uh of color but the sun is starting to go down we'll probably be going straight into the sun into turn one a little bit like last week uh, with chris in the sack so um, but he did the, uh, the the majority of that race in the end so he got the most pain in the eyes but i've got a tinted visor so that, that will kind of help here today at least i don't think it's going to be advantage of uh, 30 or whatever seconds i need to be up with uh, the middle of the pack but regardless i'm looking forward to this modified forwards coming up i might try and put in some footage that john gets from out there some really cool cars and a friend, Rich, has also, yeah, Rich Sanders, in his uh, Fiesta. So I'm trying to see what he does out there. Look forward to supporting him. And uh, I'm going to go watch that now because I don't have formation that. Let's go. It was great to see Rich absolutely going for it out there. He was quite down on power. You can see he was getting chased by Chris in the black forward behind. They had a great battle here at Snetson and actually later on in the year at Brands Hatch as well. But you can see great stuff here from Rich. Some really nice footage as well from John. Massive thanks to him as always. His links are down in the description. But it wasn't too long before we needed to get out there for the last race of the day and possibly the last race of our season. The commentator was getting quite excited about something happening on track. I think it was another catering race. Side by side most of the way those were, so even from the assembly area it was manic to watch them. But regardless, I was getting all of the car sorted, doing a little bit of a shake, I'm not exactly sure why. I think I was just trying to listen out for a little squeak. I think the car made a little funny squeaking noise when you rocked it from side to side. I assume it's supposed to be like that, but regardless, we're going out here. I think there was one retirement from the first race that was Nick in his Ford so he'll be starting essentially beside us which isn't bad at all I'm always worried when fast cars start directly behind us because I'm always thinking what happens if they get a really good start and try and squeeze through the gap but thankfully that wasn't the case here Nick he was quicker and he would start just behind Angelo in front so it wasn't all so bad bit of confusion about which side of the grid we needed to be on it's a rolling start anyway but of course you need to be on the right side so i'm going to be starting behind the bmw here of jack whitehead he's had a good year as well multiple class wins and i think he ended up winning his championship as well now i'll say this whilst we're in the formation lap it's a bit funny now the cmmcs introduced the t4 class for 2021 to try and push more people to go and use these city micro cars throughout the year now multiple people did use their micro cars in the cmmcs this year but i did the most so i think possibly i might end up being the class t4 champion which is a little bit funny i can't lie considering i didn't race against anyone but i'm a big advocate if anyone wants to race their micro car citroen c1 one of the other French small cars that race in the BRICC City Cup or also the KA of course i definitely say even if it's just to come and test for one event come and join the CMMCS for one or two events 
I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. It's a great atmosphere, and of course, you can just be testing your car. It could be a great little way to get into racing here, and possibly you could even earn a trophy. So here we are, ready for the second start of the day. Probably should have both hands on the wheel traditionally, Alex. But I knew I was the last person on the grid here, so maybe I was just chilling. But no, I should be alert at all times here. And into turn one, I don't think we had any dramas here. I think we slightly catch up on Angelo through here, who's of course being a bit cautious. But definitely this start, we're further back than we were in the first one. Down to the hairpin. Turn number two. And I can see a bit of a bunch up in front. I don't think there's any dramas here, so I try and commit to the corner. Quite a lot of lock through the corner and on the exit. Nope, there's not a BMW sideways across the track like the first one. So we're good to go. So, how do we do in this second race of the day? Well, interestingly enough, if we're looking at lap times alone, because I guess that's all I've really got to judge myself in this car. Now, my best time in the first race and my best time in the second race were essentially identical. The lap times were separated by less than a tenth of a second, which I guess is good for consistency. I guess the track was a little bit cooler in the evening. Actually, it was quite considerably cooler in the evening. And I let some of these fast guys through. I think Nick Sutton ends up leading this race because Rob Burley went out early on, but then Gavin Dunn chasing down Nick both in their white cars but obviously very very different the Mitsubishi four-wheel drive the BMW just rear-wheel drive I don't know what the horsepower difference is but I'm sure there's some in there as well but unfortunately for Nick Sutton he was having a fantastic race and unfortunately towards the end of his race the last lap in fact the exhaust came loose and started dragging on the ground and he pitted but it was the last lap of the race and I don't think he'd got any mechanical warning flags that he probably could have finished and won that race. So it's a bit gutting for him there. I think you're a fantastic one. Let's show you my fastest lap whilst we're at it. So we're not so compromised into the first corner. I think, I don't know, the line, just looking at that, the line looked slightly better than the first race where I was sort of running along that inside curb, which wasn't the smartest thing to do. Into the hairpin. I think possibly likewise a little bit better it looked like more speed was taken through there but the exit may be not so good there a little bit more understeer meaning I was running a little bit wider and possibly had to correct a bit more now into this left hander here I feel like the line looks a bit better here but looks like I'm waiting to get out of someone's way here so possibly not fully concentrated I'm going forward I think that's Sean Fairweather's Cosworth, nice to see him out there, a really fantastic car. As I've mentioned before, a really great diverse mix of cars in the CMMCS, which is part of the reason why I love going. Just every time you turn up, there's something cool out there. And it's always a nice to be a part of, and hopefully next year in the Honda, it will be more fun out on track as well, of course. More people to battle against. Into the left-hander, that looked good. Used up more of the track. So I'd say the first sector, pretty much evens. And then into the right hand here this looks a bit quicker I can't lie that looks a bit better than the first one it's not the best line but overall from entrance to exit of the corner I'd say quite quick possibly you could say the same through there as well looked a bit smoother nice stuff now what am I doing here am I gonna get over to the right hand side I am slowly gonna go over to the right hand side of the track to get the optimal line into this fast left then sharp right so let's see what we do through here so I was aiming later and later and later on the brakes and I think I eventually did find my braking point just after the second banner but it's such a fast corner I still think I could have taken a lot more speed through there hop in the curb that all looks pretty similar to the first one now through the bomb hole I think that this was easy flat even me with my limited confidence that was easy flat so then up to the long right hander to end off the lap. I don't think I needed to get out of anyone's way here. You can see my hands on the wheel here. Now, I noticed it's something I do. I'm a little bit twitchy on the wheel for whatever reason. I think I'm just trying to correct things that aren't really happening. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Not the best run through the final corner. I think I slightly messed that one up. Probably lost a few tenths in there, and that's obviously losing me time throughout the whole straight. But... Regardless, not a bad lap. Obviously, I mentioned already that very similar in terms of lap time to the first one. Less than a tenth between them, but this one was very slightly slower. But I guess it's good to see consistency between the two races. Uh, there's Ken going through in his BMW. I think Martin Scott 
was just in front of him and there was I think possibly the Volkswagen Sirocco but the sun was starting to set here it's actually quite cool conditions to just drive around the track in be nicer to be racing against someone as I mentioned but this was all valuable valuable experience for me and I'm hoping that going into next year in general I'm going to be in a good place and hopefully I'm going to feel confident going into every event I enter hopefully some pre-season track days will help that there is the checkered flag for our last race in the KA we think our last race of the season let's see what happens and let's debrief what was Weirdly, a really nice day at Sneston in the sun. There we go. Big tick on Sneston here, CMMTS. And I think the season as well. We aren't a hundred percent sure, but I think it. I think that will be the last race of the season. And it was a nice way to finish it off as well. I think. I think I just about matched my race one time. Now I'm not sure whether the track conditions were better or worse at the end, but you know I was happy to. to pretty much match it i'm not sure whether i was like you know it's, it's in the, like the thousands of a second whether it's quicker or not but regardless it was a good time a really good time um i think i said at the start of this video i wasn't really a big fan of this it just sort of didn't really feel that great with the ka but weirdly today just had so much fun and <laughs> it's completely transformed the track for me really it's, it's pretty awesome and weird i guess being that much quicker over a lap really does add to I guess the adrenaline and the enjoyment of it so yeah I'm taking a scenic walk back to the car now there's some pretty awesome shots to be had if you're a photographer late at night I don't know if I can quite get that in the background pretty cool sunset and we're parked over in the way out of paddock so I've got a bit of a walk here but yeah what a season if this is to be the last race um I'm going to have to do like a, a review of the whole year once I get to that point, once I catch up on all the videos, which I know I'm definitely behind on, but it's been a pretty awesome one. I feel like today, weirdly, I was going into this weekend thinking, have I actually improved at all over this year? Because, okay, I know it's club racing, but just personally, you want to improve, you want to do better. And I was sort of thinking to myself going into this weekend, have I got any better at all? Which feels like, it feels like I just haven't. But I think that's coming off of the back of some some tricky races. Um, I guess like looking at Castle Coombe a few weeks back when we had the issues with the car and like they weren't major issues, but you know I was still a bit off the pace of what I wanted to be. And then the race in the Saxo, I just didn't feel quite at home. But I guess that can be. I can be sort of crossed out because I didn't really get much running in it but you know it's all these sort of excuses and I, I like to be real I like to be honest in these videos and I definitely came into this weekend thinking oh, I don't know whether I actually have improved at all this year I feel like I've uh, messed up a cool a few, you know a few cool opportunities but on the other side I've had a lot of races where I've come away with just a smile whilst racing by myself and I guess if you're not really racing with anyone in particular that's that's all you can really take from the weekend and we've definitely had some of those I mean here today for, for example I mean Angelo I know is relatively new to racing and he's in you know a bit of a faster car but I I set my sort of sights on him that you know if he had some sort of issue or whatever I would have been trying to get close to him I mean the horsepower difference at the end of the day meant that was just not really feasible but you know I set my sights there and my lap times came down significantly from the CSCC event I did here like two or so months back and uh, yeah I'm just really happy about that I mean I know track conditions are different I've obviously got more experience in the KA now all things that will inherently help but I guess just in general yeah today's been a good one I've gone on a weird tangent where I don't really know where, where I'm going in this one, but I've really enjoyed the day here today at Snetterton. And if this, this is to be the, my last race, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, okay, I didn't have the battles like I had at Coombe at the start of the year or Thruxton or a couple other in like the Type R Trophy, for example, or road sports. But I just enjoy driving around the track out there. And yeah, and I know you could say, just go do a track day then. But, you know, it's part of the whole competitive thing and just it's part of the whole day, which you don't quite get in track days. So, yeah. I'm going to go and get some pizza now and we're actually going to be staying here tomorrow because we're filming the CMMCS uh, Intermarks and yeah I'm looking forward to to watching the mountain track I might, might put some footage at the end of this one to sort of just show you what it's like but they're, they're cool they're cool cars 
uh, really good to watch and some other stuff out there tomorrow but yeah congrats to all the winners in the sim mcs and just everyone in general really it's been a it's been a good weekend and i th thoroughly enjoyed it so thanks to all the helpers my dad john just everyone in general but yeah awesome stuff can't wait for the next race will that be in 2022 or something at the later point of this one all right see you soon